talk a little bit more about uh, Posh. Um, he led the grind session this year in points per game. He averaged 26.5 points per game this year on the grind session. That 60-point performance helped that out a little bit. Yeah, didn't that 60-point performance was something that will go down in top five grind session history books, I'm sure. It was a performance that when he put up, when he put up 40, he was trying to come out and Pete was like, no, nah, you ain't going nowhere, you're going back in. He's like, if we're going to set the bar, we're going to set the bar high. So once he passed the, the Raleigh Atkins uh, record, which it was crazy because uh, word of God is where Raleigh Atkins went to school, and that's who oh, OSL, that's who was, that's playing, who OSL that. was playing when Posh broke the record. What was the record? The record before that Jesse, was what was the record? 51. 51. 51. All right, we got Jesse. We're in here with us. She's going to chime in every now and then. So, she is our behind-the-scenes guru. If you do not know Jesse, you will know her. Posh's sixty-point performance did not overshadow. Uh, you know, a couple weeks before that, on senior night, when he had a. 30-point performance with 20 assists, and then Dylan put up 50 that night, you know. And it's crazy because everybody's, you know, everybody's the posh hype with OSL, and then Dylan came out and put up 50. And yeah. everybody was like, what's going on? What I liked about their style of play is they would, you know, they had a certain style of play when they were, when the score was close. And then once they got 15 points up on somebody, then they just started having fun. I mean, they would just get loose they would trade baskets with you. They would go up and down, and um, and so they were really fun to watch. They have a different brand of basketball than a lot of people um, have ever seen before. So, but people don't realize, you know, how tough it is. Where Pete was from Brownsville. Brownsville. If you look up Brownsville, uh, New York, uh, it's one of the toughest places to grow up in. Um, it, it's one of those places it's very hard to get out of. Um, that's why Pete's come up with his slogan, uh, get out of the mud, and um, or getting out, out the mud is the way that he says it. And uh, he's actually come up with a shirt now, so that'll be neat. But one of his main goals was to pull Posh out the mud. And once he pulled him out, you know, and then they feel like they need to go in and pull others out. And so... That was one thing that really, really um, attracted me to Pete as a person. Um, he was more concerned with, you know, uh, enhancing his players off the court. You know, he, he's a great skill trainer, but he is, he's just a good human being, and he wants to make sure that his players um, receive great things off the court. And so, um, you know, at that time that... Um, Posh had his injury at Marshall County, and Pete came out there on the floor. That was the first time that I'd ever seen, you know, the that part of Pete. And uh, and Pete was just he was weeping because he knew his season was over. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't just a cry. It wasn't, you know, the guy was torn up. And so I was, I was, wow, you know, I really like this guy. So I, I like everything that I love OSL's program. I love what they stand for, and. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to be around them this year. Oh yeah, you know they're always they were hospitable. Uh, we had a, a grind session member, Skyler. He go out. He went out to uh, New York and spent his birthday out there. And uh, he was just the whole trip. He was just sending me Snapchats and messages about how how hospitable they were and how they were showing them a good time. And you know it's just stuff like that 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 shows you know it's not just about basketball for the program. And you know it's coaches like Pete that that understand that concept and, and push the program for being bigger than basketball. You know, it's not just about hooping on the courts. There's always off the court stuff that goes on and one and Pete's one of those people that has a positive influence on those off the court things. Right, and and what you see is even like the guys from Prolific, Namari hits 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 a couple of shots. Pete's talking to him over there, you know, and Pete's actually a fan, even mm -hmm. though he's coaching against him. And so even though your opponent's on the court, off the court, all those guys go up and talk to Pete, and 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 likewise, you know, all of our coaches intermingle with our players because they everybody's trying to go the same place, whether it be college, whether it be overseas, whether it be G League or whatever. But 
you know, we can speak a little bit about that. Now, Jesse had a very interesting stat. Jesse, how many did you say um, do we have in college now? Over, what, five and a half years, six years? Are you counting the 2020 class? Yes. <clears throat> uh, 1,675. 1,675. So we multiplied that times 40,000, right? That's uh, what the average price of a four-year degree is. And what was it, 66 million? Mm -hmm. So if you really want to know what, at the core of it all, what the grind session is about, that's what it's about. Let's get them where they need to go. Let's go get them that slip of paper. And, and then that's what, you know, like Damien Fishback was talking about at our banquet. He, he is like, that's what it's all about. Just go and get that piece of paper, then you can do anything you want to within the game of basketball. And so... It's, it's it's very rewarding. We didn't know that's that that stat until today when Jesse when Jesse came in. So it just um, makes the day a lot brighter. Oh yeah. I guess uh, I guess we can move on a little bit. We could talk about uh, you know some of our leaders <coughs> in the points per game this season. As I said earlier, Posh led the the whole grind session in average points per game. Uh, behind him, we had two kids who didn't get. The opportunity to play a lot on the grind session, but they got four games in a piece and they played for the same team, but they were second and third in leading in the grind session. And that was Kennard Richardson and Akichi Chantelou from Life Christian. Uh, Kennard, uh, he had averaged 26.5 and Akichi Chantelou averaged 25.8. And they were both over four games that they had on the grind session, which, you know, both of them just recently committed to Iona. So they'll be able to play in college together, and much respect to them because they won their respectable Virginia State Championship with Life Christian, and uh, I think that was Kennard's second state championship that he got to win. So congratulations to them on being able to take that home. You know? Yeah, Chantelou is incredible. Yeah. And I didn't realize that we had had him two years previous at another school, and so that was, that was interesting. Jesse pointed that one out as well. Yeah. Right behind them uh, in points per game was Mr. Nix, Dacian Nix from Trinity International. Uh, he had averaged 24.7 points over 15 games. And he was one on that list that played the most games and to average 24.7 over a span of 15 grind session games. You know, they played more than 15 games total over the season, but just the grind session games. To play that many and average 24.7 against high-level performance is pretty good. And that's not just, you know, he's not just scoring the whole game. You know, he, he actually looks to score second as far as, you know, he likes to pass first. He's one of those pass-first yeah. point guards who can still put up 24 points a game. Like, that's just insane. Is he as good a passer as Jason Kidd? I think he I is. I think he's a better passer than Jason okay, Kidd. Okay, there you go. And see, that's what I'm saying is we're talking about perennial all-stars yeah. that we're comparing him to. Um that's what, uh, I th when I talked to Jermaine Jackson, um, the one that coached Mello, I said, um, where do you think he's going to go in the draft? He, you know what he said? He said, I think he's going to go number one. I do too. I, why would you not take Mello number one? Best passer, best shooter. Um, can he play defense? Of course he can play defense. He's six seven with his shoes off. He's long um, and plus. Um, you know, any team that gets him is going to have a marketing magnet there. You know, what, what Atlanta did with Trey Young, they, f you know, they didn't have the most successful season, but they filled the stands every night because of the fact that they had Trey Young. Yeah. So Melo has that same effect. Yeah, you mar know? His, his marketability is probably at an A+, plus, I'd say so. And uh, Melo being, a, you know, a six seven point guard who has great vision and can also score and actually just added, you know, some some bounce to his arsenal where he can actually jump now and, you know, dunk on some people. He, he's he's one of those people, you know, they call them unicorns, but they're different, you know, like like Chris Stops is one of those people. He's, he's a different type of guy, you know, six, you don't find a lot of six, seven point guards and you don't find a lot of guys who can pass the ball as well as he can. Like, I'm not going to say he can pass the ball as well as Dacian, but he is definitely, you know, in the conversation as far as, a couple notches under him, you know, and there's not a lot of people that can say that they're like that. You know, we got another one, Zion. He can probably oh, also to say that, play yeah. the pass the ball as, as well as Dacian. Now, those are two people that I don't know who I could pick better between as far as passing the ball. 
because they both got great vision. Yeah, and, and I think that Zion, you brought him up, but I think Zion is the best true point guard in high school basketball right now. We, you know, in that 2021, they can have him ranked 20th or whatever, but mm-hmm. my goodness, he can um, he can make so many things happen out there, or he can, he can shoot, he can score. Zion always makes the best play, you know. Uh, if you think about what he did when he went to Bella Vista, he won the championship. Mm-hmm. I mean, he made that team even tw- better than what they were. You know, yeah. and, they, and that's not saying that they weren't bad. You know, they already had Terry Armstrong, who went overseas. He was committed to Arizona, went over to play in the NBA. They had Addison Patterson, went to Oregon. He was very successful at Oregon. Jimmy Bell, the star at St. Louis University. You know, they had some players. And shout out to Jimmy. Jimmy is like a 4.0, they said. He's, very smart. He's doing very smart. Very Iman, smart. Iman yeah. Sertovich, you yes. know, he went to UTM. He was also a very smart guy, you know. He had a, a very high GPA. They had a, a team full of four stars and five stars, and then when they added Zion, it's like, what is this, like the the, the Warriors? Is this the Warriors with yeah. KD and Steph and Clay? Like. Yeah, uh, it, it was hard to stop them, and then when they met up with Spire in the championship, we all knew that was going to be, you know, probably the best game of the year, and it turned out to be the best game of the year. Seeing Zion go up against Melo and Isaiah Jackson, Myron Gardner, Rocket Watts, it was just, it was exceptional, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You probably had potentially five pros, five, six pros in, On the, the floor in that game. At yeah. the same time. And you don't see that in high school, so that's also the essence of... The grind session. Win.